Yes, sir. Time for us to get started. All right, y'all, we're going to get started. Hopefully, y'all in Facebook land, YouTube land, are with us, being safe out there. We're going to stand and face the rules and open up with the prayer. Or the scripture, excuse me. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Yes. Let thy hand help me, for I will cho I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandment. Praise the Lord. Let's Psalms 119, verse 169 through 175. Yes, sir. Good reading. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel which is Jesus. And we'd like to thank everybody for tuning in on the Lord's Sabbath day. This is the Sabbath day of the week and where we get honor to God and come together on his holy day so we can get our instructions. Amen. So today, we deal dealing with a topic for believers. And the topic is fight to get in the book of life. I don't know if many of y'all know God got a book of life that has you as a member of this church. But I want to make sure that we address this for the believers to always fight. And when I look at that, when I look out there in the world today and I see a lot of people who started this walk, who started walking, believing in Jesus and his laws, they tried it. And when the fight came to them, they failed. And what I mean by the fight came to them, such as sin, whether it's a fight of lust, whether it's a fight of fornication, whether it's a fight of committing adultery, whether it's a fight of lying, stealing, and killing, whatever it is, when that fight came to them, they failed. I'm here to tell you that it's okay to fail. But the problem is, when you fail and you lose your fight to get back with the Lord, that defines who you are, which is a failure. God is our advocate. He said, once you, once you accept Jesus as the Lord and say, Father and Lord, he said, I am your advocate to the Father. And while your failures do not define who you are, what defines who you are when you fight back the sin that took you down. Amen. Don't let that sin keep you down. And we got to we got to make sure we understand that as believers. Fight to get in the book of life. Every day we get up, it's never gonna be a time where you gonna say, "My life is smooth." Don't think that the simple thoughts won't get in your mind. Don't think that you won't sin. Don't think that people won't sin against you. It's what you do. It's how you respond to sin. And most of us today are failing at that. This lesson is put together for to strengthen the believers. Fight to get in the book of life. So I want y'all to understand we're here to help. You to understand this God's word. We need help. And a lot of times, God has his prophets writing about the failures that they have. His apostles wrote about the failures they have. 
They didn't quit. And I'm going to show you that. Like I said before, when you fall or you fall in sin, that doesn't define who you are. It's what you do when you fall in sin. Do you fight back or do you become a willful sinner? Hmm. A believer, he's going to fight back and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, I have sinned. Help me with it. That's right. Help me with it. That's right. And that's what this lesson is put together for you to understand that God is still there through your struggles. That's right. You got to have it. You got to understand. And these men and women of God had struggles with sin, had struggles with putting the gospel out, had struggles of, of what they were dealing with in their life. But as long as you and me don't give up on God, he's not going to give up on us. So we're going to get right into this lesson. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 20. We're going to start with verse 11. Let me show y'all the importance of fighting to get in this book. Come on, bro. And believe me, there's no other alternative but the lake of fire if you're not, if you're not in this book. Revelation chapter 20, and we're going to start with verse 11. Let me show y'all the importance. And like I said, we got a lot of distractions in this world going on today. Don't let nobody distract you for keeping the Sabbath, for keeping the dietary law, for keeping his high holy days. Don't let them distract you. fight through this stuff. And the reason why you fight through sin, because you want to get into this book. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. Go ahead. And I saw a great white throne. Him that sat on it. Yes, sir. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Mm -hmm. And that was found no place for them. Now understand this. This great white throne is judgment time. This is when Jesus and his and his uh, uh, and, the, and, the, and the saints of judge. These are the ones that made it in the first resurrection. We're going to touch on that a little bit. But go ahead. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Yes, sir. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. Understand what he's saying right here. He said the books were open. People don't understand what books were open that we are going to be judged by. The same book we're reading right here in the Bible. All these scriptures, all these laws. He's going to look into this book and see how we fulfill his law, how we did by his book. He said the books were open. These 66 books were open to see how he handled his word. And he said another book were open. So it's another book open, which is the book of life. This is the book that we fight in to get into. Go ahead. And the dead was judged out of those things which was written in the books yes. according to their works. According to what? Their works. Their works. When you fight, that's a work. When you fight in the struggles of sin, that's a work. Yes. But when you stop fighting, you are a willful sinner. When I fight, start fighting, I'm a willful sinner. God said that's no more sacrifice for people who willfully sin. Don't, 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 don't underestimate God and his power to help you through your sin struggles. Fight with him. He's going to be an advocate. Meaning he's going to assist you so you can have forgiveness for sin so he can help you through it. But many of us who started in this book have lost that fight. But if you lost this fight, this is your destiny. Go ahead. 13. And the sea gave up the dead which was in it. Yes, sir. And death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them. Yes, sir. And they was judged, they remained according to their words. All they said, everybody got to come up out the grave. Whether you're in the sea, whether you're in the dirt, you're coming up. Whoever, man, whatever man or woman was up upon this earth, they coming up, they got to be judged before this great white throne. That's right. And by what? Their works. Yes. So don't let nobody fool you. Like you ain't got the work to get in this book of life. The work is performing, not to sing. That's the work. Go ahead, brother. 
And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Yes, sir. This is the second death. When well, he said death and hell, this means that there's not going to be no more dying. There's not death. He's talking about you. Don't, who everybody gonna live forever. Ain't nobody gonna die this time. Is he gonna be eternal in hell or eternal in the lake of fire? In the grave, nobody's gonna be buried no more at this time. This is great white throne judgment. And this is the second death. Go ahead. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Ooh, he said, if you ain't found written in the book of life, you was going to be cast in the lake of fire. This is what we don't want. Amen. We don't want to be cast in the lake of fire. Fight to get in the book. And I'm going to show you some of the things that we got to make sure you understand about fighting. See, one thing in this world we have forgot is when you fight, you win some and you lose some. Like I said before, when you lose some, that doesn't define who you are when you lose the sin. You just get your behind back up and get back in the ring and start fighting again with the help of the Lord. Let me show you that. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 24 to show you about this falling. You can't win them all. Sin overtake me sometimes. Sin overtake it all passes sometimes. It's what you do when you sin. How do you fight back? Proverbs chapter 24, we're going to start at verse 16. Go ahead, brother. For a just man falleth seven times. How many times he falls? Seven times. A just man meaning a man or a woman who is in this book falls seven times. This can be a day. This can be an hour. This can be in a week. It all depends on how strong or weak you are of being a just man or woman. Go ahead. For a just man falls seven times and rises up again. What do you mean, hell? He said a just man falls seven times, but he rises up. Rises up. This is what a just man is defined from when he rises up. He didn't just lay in the sin. He rose up and said, Lord, I have lusted. Lord, I have lied. Lord, I have stolen. Forgive me. Help me with this. Yes. yes. But we have lost that fight. We have lost it because most people today will sin and won't say nothing and go to sleep and wake up tomorrow and do the same thing. He said, just when it rises up, how do you rise back up with the Lord? You ask him to forgive you. Read that again. For a just man falleth seven times. Yes, sir. And rises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. That's it. The wicked gonna fall into mischief. That's the one that lost the fight to get back in the race for salvation, to get in the Lamb's book of life. When you fall in mischief and you think you win because you got money, you got cars, you got clothes, you got all the materialistic and stuff in the world, you're like, oh man, God bless me. I tell you all the time, if it calls you to break God's law, it's a counterfeit. It's a counterfeit. Nothing should cause you to break God's law and prosper. But when the devil is in the head of your life, you see it as a blessing. You see it. You know why I know? Because I thought it was like that. Let's turn to Acts chapter 14. I want to make, I want to make sure that you see that the men of God that we read about and we study, they had fights too. They had failures too. But it's but it's a um, it's a teaching tool to see what the men and the women of God went through in the Bible so we can build strength from it. And how do we build strength from it? When we fall, we say, Paul failed, David failed, and look how they got back up and God helped them. Let's turn to Acts chapter 14. I just want to make sure that we understand that just because we call ourselves a Christian, just because we call ourselves a Sabbath keeper or a law keeper, don't think 
that you're not going to struggle with some sins. And you say, man, Jim, I've been dealing with this sin for a lot of years. Yeah. I tell you, brother or sister, keep God first and hopefully he'll help you through it. There's a lot of brothers and sisters who were dealing with a lot of sickness for a lot of years. Like the woman with the issue of blood, she was dealing with that issue of blood for 15 years. But one day, God delivered her from it. Amen. One day, because of her faith. Let's look at Paul, Acts chapter 14, verse 19. Let's look at the falls that Paul had, or the fights that Paul had, so we can build some strength from it. Acts chapter 14, verse 19. Go ahead, brother. And there came there the certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, the servant whom persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Wait a minute. These Jews, Paul on people, and these men stoned Paul. Paul is the apostle that wrote the majority of the New Testament. He went through this. They saw him and they thought he was dead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas and Dirk. Let me ask you a question. Did Paul fall here? Yeah, he, they stoned him. He rose up, he said. What did Proverbs chapter 24 say? A righteous man falls seven times, but he rises up. Let's see what Paul did. Let's see if Paul said, oh man, he's just trying to kill me, man. I ain't finna preach the gospel no more. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it. Go ahead. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they, was, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconia. <laughs> Wait a minute. Paul got stoned in that city and they thought he was dead. And he returned back to the same city and stoned him. Yes. Man, look at how Paul is fighting. Paul said, I ain't worried about this. Hmm. But he going through some pain. And like I tell y'all, it's not the pain that you go through that defines who you are. It's what you do when the pain hits you what defines who you are. Paul could easily say, man, I ain't going back over there no more. Hmm. He went right back to the same city and did what? Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Go ahead, brother. 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exalting them to continue in the faith, yes, so that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Whoa, that's powerful. He said, through much tribulation. That's right. We, he said, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. These people inside the other churches are not preaching to you that that you're gonna go through some tribulation. You're gonna go through some fights. To stay in God's book. You're going to go through a lot of ups and downs. That's why when I, back in the day when I used to go through my ups and downs, I used, to, I used to get into my feelings. I used to try to make people hurt. Pain. But now I look at this thing, I say, okay. I'm better. I say, I laugh at it when I go through a lot of these ups and downs. A lot of these tribulations. Because I'm looking at, God, what you trying to teach me? And he said in James chapter 1, he said, through all the downward temptation, it's to teach you patience. Mm -hmm. Patience. And a lot of us don't have patience when that fight comes. That's right. You got to fight your fight. That's why God said, look, you work out your own salvation through fear and trembling. I work out my own salvation through fear and trembling. I got to fight my fight, and you got to fight your fight to stay to get in God's book of life. Period. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. We ain't done with Paul. Paul went through a lot. I'm going to show you the struggles and the fights that Paul went through. Acts 16 verse 16. You get it, brother? Go ahead. And it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel posed with the spirit of divination met us. Yes, sir. Which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Now here comes this witch That's or this voodoo right. lady or this witch Crap thing that she doing to bring her master much gain, or much money, or much materialistic stuff by soothsaying. Mm -hmm. She dealing with the, the occult world. Go ahead. The same followed Paul and us 
and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, mm -hmm. which show unto us the way of salvation. Understand this right here now. Make sure you understand this. Just because a person prayed, you said, Man, that's a good, that's a law keeper right now. They showing us about the Sabbath. That does not mean they are your friend. Because a person compliments you. Listen to what Paul said. This is how he responded to her. Go ahead. Verse 18. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to, to, to the Spirit. He said, She did this many days. And Paul agreed. Why? Why? Would you be grieved about a person telling you that you're doing a good job? You bring in salvation. Because Paul was a discerner of spirits. He knows what she's doing. Most people take that and take that and just walk away with her with their chest poked out, smiling and everything. But not Paul. Paul discerned the spirits. Listen to what he said. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Yes, sir. And he came out the same hour. But when Paul commanded that spirit, that's right, that evil spirit to come out of him, and that spirit came out. Now he's doing a righteous thing here, according to what God said. But the person that was using that lady didn't feel the same way. Let listen. Let's see how he brought the fight to Paul. Go ahead. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. So when they saw that they couldn't make no more money out of this witch, they caught Paul because they said, man, you took away my money. Hmm. This is what Paul, this is what happened. Go ahead. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, these men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Go ahead. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Go ahead. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. You understand what happened here? These folks lying. Talking about what lawful. It's lawful to cast out a demon out of a, a person. Mm -hmm. And they say they took their clothes off. And beat them. You talk about being naked and being beat. For what? Doing righteous. Let's see how Paul handled it. Go ahead. 23. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailers to keep them safe. So they did not only just beat them with many stripes. I mean, I'm talking about Paul received about 39 stripes five times. He said, they ain't going to beat them. They cast them into prison. This is written for our understanding. We went through none of this right here. Yet. But if we go through this stuff, this is how you respond to it. Go ahead. Verse 24. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Mm, they, put and, in, they put them in stocks. They put them in chains. Go so ahead. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me this is the response Amen. of Paul and Silas? They sang praise? Absolutely, bro. Man, this power. Man, it is power. They fight. This is how they fight. They showing us the example how to fight in the time of tribulation and pain. Mm -hmm. Me and us, we get in prison, we complain to the God. We complain to we ain't getting enough food. I need my phone. I need to do this. I need to do that. No. Paul and Silas, they went to say the praise unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And somebody else heard them too. Go ahead. Verse 26. And certainly there was a great earthquake. Yes, sir. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's band were loose. Wait a minute, I wonder who caused the earthquake. Hmm. God opened them doors up, and all of them could have ran out. Go ahead. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep. So the prisoner who kept him was asleep. Go ahead. And seeing the prison doors open, 
He drew out his sword and could have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. So this man was about to kill himself because he knows the king over him was going to kill him for all these people escaping. He's the problem. But listen to what Paul said. Go ahead. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. He said, Man, we all here. We ain't going nowhere. Don't kill yourself, brother. Mm. We all here. But understand, through Paul's inside of tribulation, it's a lesson to be learned here. Like I said, it's what you do when, when the fight comes up against you. Now, this is what they was actually there for. Go ahead. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Simon. Yes, sir. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What? Hmm. Paul was in prison yeah. to do a job, still in prison. He said, what must I do to be saved? Hmm. See, we got to understand in our fight, that's a lesson to be learned. God using you to carry out a job. And you just don't see it because the reason why most people don't see it because they're concerned about self and how to feel. I don't like this feeling. I want to return back to doing what I've been doing. No, listen to him and understand your job as a Christian. You want to help people get saved. And this man asked Paul, what must I do to get saved? What he said, go ahead. 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Yes, sir. And thy house. He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved in your house. This man about to kill himself. Amen. Because these prisoners almost got out. Because mm. he knew, man, can't nobody done this but God. Can't an earthquake and open up all these doors. And these men stay here? I got to find out who their God is. Hmm. I need to be with them. Come on. Because they saved my life. Come on. Go ahead. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Yes, sir. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straightway. He took them and baptized in the same night. Hmm. Don't think baptism ain't important, man. He said, what must I be do to be saved? They baptized in the same night. Yeah. They accepted the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. So he fell. They got some food out of the deal. Go ahead. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the surgeon, saying, let those men go. So God said that the magistrate, understand this, God controls it all. He said, let the men go. Go ahead, this is what he had to have. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrate has sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. Mm. God delivered them out of their church. God delivered Paul and Silas out of their tribulation, yes. out of their fight. Yes. They sang and praised God in prison. They ain't do nothing wrong. Mm. A lot of times we are not going to do anything wrong. It just keeps going to come up against us. And we got to make sure we keep the same mentality as Paul and Kim. They praised God. They got into the word. They sang. They didn't just mope around. That's right, bro. They didn't just feel sorry for themselves because they got locked up. This is how most people are today. They think it's going to be sunshine every day. No, they don't supposed to do me like that. I'm a man of God. <laughs> if you go, we're going to find out. These men of God got done wrong a lot. A lot. We finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. What are you doing, Paul? Man, Paul went through some stuff. And we think we're going through something. We better use this for our education so we can be, so we can make sure we understand what we what Paul done and build some strength from it. 
2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 21. Let's hear Paul explain his fight. Just like a summary of things he went through. Verse 21, go ahead. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, how be it, wherein soever it is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Paul said, I am bold also. <coughs> this is what people got to understand that they're going to look at us and think we're foolish because we're speaking bold in the presence of death. And Paul went through some stuff, man. He's going to tell you how his feelings are and what, how he feels about what he's going through to fight to stay in the book. Go ahead. Are they Hebrews? Yes, sir. So am I. Paul said, are they Hebrews? So am I. Go ahead. Uh, so, so am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. So Paul repping where he's from. He's like, man, I'm just like you. You Hebrew? Oh, I'm Hebrew. You see the Abraham? See the Abraham. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't understand that Paul is an Israelite. Some people think Paul is a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Paul from the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. Go ahead. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison, more frequent, in death. Oh, Paul is ripping what he's been through. He said, man, y'all think y'all went through something? I done did more than y'all. Mm -hmm. He said, I am more in labors, more abundantly, in stripes above measure, in prison, more frequently, and in death often. Meaning he came up against death a lot. That's right. This is what Paul is saying about the fight to stay in the book. Paul said, I don't care what come up against me. I'm going to serve Christ foolishly if you think it's foolish. That's right. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Verse 24. Of the Jews five times received by for the stripes save one. Woo! You understand what stripes are? You remember how you get a whooping by your mama with that switch? He said, I received 40 stripes five times. If this ain't a black man or a Negro, who is it? We, that, that's what they've been doing. Even the slavery, they beat us on the backs. They beat us on the backs. They ain't changed that, your mama. They beat Jesus on the back. Yes. And they beat us on our backs when we came into the marriages and scattered all over the world. These are black people which are Israelites. But Paul is telling you his rep. Go ahead. Fifth 25. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Mm. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. He telling you, man, he been beaten with us. He said, once was, was I stoned. Thrice he suffered shipwreck. And night and day I have been in deep, and even in the deep sea, night and day, when nobody even shipwrecked. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In journeying often, in perils of waters, in perils of water. Understand this word, perils mean danger. That's right. Danger. He been, he been in dangers of waters, he said he been shipwrecked. In perils of robbers, that mean dangers of robbers and what else? In perils of by my own countrymen. Yes, sir. In perils by the heathen. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brothers. Paul get this fight coming in all directions. North, east, south, and west. He got this fight coming from his brothers. He got this fight coming to false prophets. He got this fight coming from countrymen. He got this fight coming all over. Yes. Paul said, man, look, man. I'm fighting to get in this book. I'm fighting to get this book. And this is written for our edification so we can be a strength from this. Man, we went through this stuff Paul was going through. Mm. Go ahead, brother. 27. In weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, fasting often, in cold and nakedness. That sounds like serving God uncomfortable. Mm. Like I tell y'all all the time. When you're serving God, you're going to be uncomfortable sometimes. When I'm serving God, I'm going to be uncomfortable sometimes. I'm not leaving myself out. This stuff is 
Man, a lot of stuff gonna go down in the three and a half year tribulation period that most of the world do not know about. That's right. Most and a lot of them gonna have to serve God just like this because they waited too long to get in the wilderness. The wilderness gonna be shut down once Israel get in there. They're going to have them angels outside. Don't let nothing in. Don't let nothing out. This is some of the stuff that you're going to have to go through. If you're not in the wilderness at the time. And some we're going through now. As a nation. Go ahead. 28. Besides those things that are without. That which cometh upon me daily. Yes sir. Care of all the churches. So Paul didn't leave his job. He said, besides all those things I went through, I still went inside the churches and took care of business. I still showed up on the Sabbath. I still showed up on the high days. I still kept the dietary law. People got to understand how to fight. Paul said he took care of the business of all the churches. All of them. He made sure they were going in the right direction. He didn't, only, he didn't just Wilding all the stuff that was going on when he kept falling left and right for saying, for preaching the gospel. He kept the thing pushing. He kept moving and said, I kept the business of all the care of the churches. Go ahead. Who is weak and I am not weak. Mm -hmm. Who is offended and I burn not. Paul asked the question, who is weak? He said, I'm not. I'm not weak. And from what I'm looking at, he sure ain't weak. Go ahead, brother. If I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmity. Mm -hmm. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed for, for which is blessed for evermore, knoweth that I lie now. God said, I'm giving the glory to the God of our fathers. God, God of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which are blessed for evermore. No, I don't lie. He's not lying about this. These scriptures are not lying. Let's go to Acts chapter 28. We still dealing with Paul and his fights to stay in the book. I'm showing you this stuff so you understand that these apostles, these prophets, went through some stuff. They, it wasn't like these scriptures they think that, okay, we're going to get this bread and we're going to sit up here and nothing going to go wrong with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. Some people got sick as preachers. And something went wrong with them. I got sick, but God brought me through it. He brought me through it. He didn't say the weapon wouldn't form up. He said it wouldn't prosper. So it formed up against me, made me sick. But God brought me out of it. Brought me out of it pretty quick, too. I praise him for that. Acts chapter 28, we're going to start with verse 1. And believe me, no weapon going to form up against you and prosper. God don't want you to die right now. You ain't going to die. But like me and this brother were talking before the lesson, we pray that if somebody asks us to pray for us, pray for them to get healing or whatnot, I always pray, he prays, let the Lord will be done. Because we don't know is that the time God using them to get back you could get in touch with him and ask for salvation at the time. Because a lot of people don't understand death is just a brief interruption of life. A brief. He said, look, man, you go ahead. You know you're dying. Get your house in order. Ask God to forgive you for all your sins. That could be your opportunity to get right. That could be my opportunity to get right. The next step is eternity. Yes. So, Let's look at Paul here. We still dealing with his fights and what he did. And sometimes God let people see what you go through to, to show them that you're a man. You're strong. Acts 28, verse 1. Go ahead. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. Yes, sir. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. Mm -hmm. For they kindled a fire and received us every one mm -hmm. because of the present rain and because of the cold. He said, These barbarian people, or barbarous people, 
didn't show no little kind. Didn't want kind to Paul in. Right. Go ahead. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. So Paul went to go build a fire, and this snake, this viper of venom, could have been a rattlesnake. It it stuck in Paul's hand, and it wrapped around him. And Paul tried to get it off of him. But look at what happened. Go ahead. And when the barbarians saw the venomous, venomous beast hang on his hand. So we know if venomous beast is his poison. Poison inside of him. Hang on his hand. Did you ever get your easy body and say, boom, and get off? No, he was on his hand. Go ahead. They said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, <laughs> whom though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered us not to live. So they thought that was a judgment of God and killing Paul. So he a murderer. This is how he's going to die. But look what Paul did. Go ahead. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Paul shook that thing out. Get off me. In the fire, he felt no harm. <laughs> now this is how people going to feel about you when you go through the tribulation period and when you live. Go ahead. How be it they looked when he should have swore or fallen down dead suddenly. He said, look, they look, they see, trying to see, because when you get bit by venomous, that venom always swole your hand up. He said, Paul, what ain't swole? Mm. He said, or falling down dead. He ain't even die, because if you don't get no anti-venom quick and easy, day, you're going to die in, in a matter of minutes. That's right. Minutes. Go ahead. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they they changed their minds and said that he was a God. <laughs> like I said, man, God uses certain things to make you look powerful. Make you look powerful. And some people confuse this as he, that as uh, uh, your faith in God is being arrogant. He think he know all that. He think he is. He think that he done been through this and that. He think he's something. No. If I'm giving glory and Paul is giving glory to God, we are giving the power back to him. Just want people to see this right here, man. Paul shook the venom out. And look what they said. He's a God. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 7. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island. Yes, sir. Whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. Yes, sir. So they lodged us three days up in the house. Go ahead. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Listen, Paul, this man was sick with a fever and bloody pulse. And they talking about that uh, look, 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 that bloody post is talking about he had blood in his stool or in the toilet as he wanted to use the bathroom. That's what I say about it. And he said, Paul laid his hand and healed him. This is the power that Paul had. Through his tribulation. Man, he was ups and downs, ups and downs. Go ahead. Verse 9. So when this was done. Others also, which had diseases in the Isle of Cain, and were healed. Ooh, go ahead. Who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed, they laden us with such things as was necessary. So they healed Paul here, all the people in their cities. And then, before Paul left, they gave them everything they needed for their journey. And that's power. God will take care of you in your fight. We fighting to stay in the book. And I'm showing you ups and downs of what Paul did. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Let's look at Paul's last fight and what he said. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. It's that good that it is. It is powerful, bro. Man, we are, we living in some times, y'all, where people lost their will to fight to get in God's kingdom. This is why it's so important for us to keep preaching the gospel. I thank God for Facebook. I thank God for YouTube. 
I thank God for all these social media sites that all the believers of, God, of the God of Israel is on. Because we need this in a time when they shut stuff off from us. We need to build this strength. And I appreciate all the brothers out there in, in, the, in the Israelite church who are preaching the truth of Jesus and his laws. Let's look at Paul in his last fight and how he, how he talked about his last fight. Verse 1, go ahead. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Yes, sir. He said, God don't judge the quick and the dead at the spirit of his kingdom. Not before. So grandma ain't in heaven right now. Granddad ain't in heaven, little baby ain't in heaven. Nobody in heaven that died before this time. He gonna judge them all at the same time. Go ahead. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Uh, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doubt. Wait a minute. He got long suffering in there. That's right. You gonna suffer. This that fight. And doctrine. You fight it with doctrine of the God of Israel. Go ahead. For well, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. But after their own lusts shall they heed to themselves teachers having it in ears. This is what's going on today. Yes, it is. Sound doctrine is keeping the Sabbath. Sound doctrine is not eating unclean food like pork, swine, catfish, and all that. Sound doctrine is keeping the high days. Which we, kept, which we kept Passover, Feast on Every Bread, and now after that we're going to keep Pentecost and all the other holidays, that's sound doctrine. He said they're going to, pre they're going to find preachers that, that can soothe their itching ears. I want to have fun in tired of these laws. So they're going to find the church. They're going to be more about fun. They're going to be more about these gods of the land like Christmas and Easter programs and and uh, all these different types, Mother Day, Father Day program, all this stuff that is not written in the book. They're going to find these preachers and they're going to give them all their fun. Go ahead. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Yes, sir. And shall be turned unto fables. You see what I'm saying? You see what the book said? They turn to fable. Christmas is a fable. Right. Easter is a fable, which is a lie. All these secular holidays are fables or lies. That's right. We turn to sound doctrine. God don't judge us on his law. He said the book's going to be open, right? Yes. So he opened the books up and see how many times you kept Passover. See how many times you kept the Sabbath. See how many times you kept the dietary law. He opened the book and see all this stuff. This is what we're going to be judged off of. To get in what? The book of life. This is the fight. Go ahead. Verse 5. For watch thou in all things and do afflictions. Endure afflictions? That's right. We're going to be afflicted. Endure it. Get ready to fight. Time you get up out your bed, you, you get in your mindset, okay, let me see what I'm going to have to deal with. Let me see what kind of sin I'm going to have to deal with. But people don't get out of their bed. They get out of their bed thinking like, oh, it's such a happy day. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> and true, you might. I'm not saying that your day is going to be unhappy all the time. But don't let that happiness be seen. Come on. A lot of people let that happiness be seen because they want to feel good. Paul said, don't suffer right here. Mm. If your happiness is seen, that means that you are following the devil. And you are, you are God's book of life. Go ahead, brother. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. This is what we do. We're making full proof of our ministry. We're keeping this word popping. We're keeping this word going. Just because they told us we couldn't gather as a congregation, ain't nobody here for me and his brother. But our congregation is out there on Facebook land, YouTube land. We still gather. We're keeping it going. But most people say, well, we can't get together, so let's just shut the church down. Let's not preach anything. No, that ain't how we roll. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered. Yes, sir. In the time of my departure. 
is, is at hand. Paul talking about his death here. Go ahead. That's right. I have fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You see what Paul said here? He said, I have fought. He fought. All this stuff we read about him is about him fighting to stay in the book of life. I have fought a good fight. And he said, I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. Mm -hmm. How many of us keeping our faith right now? Faith in what, Jeff? Why aren't you keeping the Sabbath? Stopping working on the Sabbath. That's your fight. Why aren't you keeping the high days? Why aren't you marrying a, a, the opposite sex? This is what people don't understand. Why aren't you why don't you stop fornicating? Why don't you stop lying? Why don't you stop stealing? And most of all, ask God to help you through. I'm not saying these people are not going to, going to stop completely, but you can lessen it. You can lessen it down. Don't be a willful sinner. Now, if you go out there and marry uh, the same sex, that means you're a willful sinner. You're willful. That's right. Ain't no, I mean, you go home to this man, the old woman, every day. How you God gonna help you do that? That's if you live into it, live into it. That's right. That's Don't be a willful sinner. Go ahead. Verse eight. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Ooh, that's what we want right now. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love His appearing. This is what we are fighting for right here. A crown of righteousness. What is that crown of righteousness? You are going to be a God. Just like the Father, just like the Son. This is what we fight to be. A God. We ain't fighting to be no angel out of us. I mean, I can't wait to get my wings. When you say that, you do not understand God's book. We were created in God's image. You want to know what God looks like? He got a head, arms, two legs, a butt, all this stuff that we got. We do not get wings. We do not do look like no angel. That's why the angel was jealous. Saying, what is this man you mind for? They set him over the kingdom of God. Same thing Satan was mad about. And he got his behind kicked out. Just want to make sure people understand. Fight to stay in the book. Have good doctrine. Paul said he kept the faith. He's going to be in the kingdom. Period. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Let, let's look at some more of God's people. Revelation chapter 20. We're going to start with verse 4. Who are fighting. And some of us might have to go through this right here. I'm going to hit a couple of them so you understand what's, what, what we're talking about when you fight and stay in the book. Revelation chapter 20, we'll start with verse 4. Go ahead. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I Who saw, is these people right here? Mm -hmm. I saw thrones, and judgment was given unto them. These are people that make it in the first resurrection, brothers and sisters. They got the right to judge now. These are the people that are going to judge at the great white throne judgment, the saints wow. and Jesus. But before they get to that, now let's check out what they got to go through before they get these titles. Go ahead. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Wait a minute. <laughs> he said, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded these are the people that <laughs> got the right to judge, got the right to be in the first resurrection. Go ahead. For the word of God, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead. And he also said these are the ones that take that didn't take the image of the beast and worship him. Or not receive the mark. And they're right here on their forehead. I believe we come down to this right here. Go ahead. Or in their hands, and they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. This is what we want right here. 
But before we get this, you notice a lot of people went through a lot of pain right here in this particular verse? Yes. This word, let's go here, verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. And believe me, sisters and brothers, you want, I want to be in that first resurrection because if we stand before this right, right throne, it's a slim chance you're going to make it. I'm not saying you're gonna make, you ain't going to make it, but it's slim. You want to be in that first resurrection, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. You blessed if you fight the good fight because you have gotten into the book of life. You there. You blessed if you got in there. Go ahead. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the second resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be Read it, Read it again. Blessed, blessed, verse 6. Uh -huh. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first, first resurrection. Go ahead. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So you bless you get the first resurrection because he said death has no more power over you. You're not gonna die no more. For the ones that will be gods upon the earth. Now you're gonna have to die us upon the earth. If you get the opportunity to control cities, you bless. But I just want to show you this little tidbit about um uh, these thrones and that crown of righteousness and what they had to go through, some will be hit. Now let's look at somebody who will be hit. Let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark chapter 6. Mark 6. Let's look at a man who lost his head because of the truth and lust was the reason why he lost his head. Lust was the reason why he lost his head. I mean, lust is very powerful. Brothers and sisters, lust is very powerful. Let's go to Mark chapter 6 and verse 17. Go ahead, brother. And Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, the son, bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother's Philip's wife, for he had married her. Now understand, it's Herod. He married Herodias, which is his brother's wife. And John told him that you are committing adultery, brother. You are sinning. You got your brother wife. You can't get your brother wife. And believe me, this is it good with Herodias. Go ahead. For John had said unto Herod, it is not lawful for me to have my brother's wife. He said, it ain't lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Go ahead. Therefore, Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him, but she could not. This was a very evil person. Herodias, very evil. Yes. And she wanted to kill him. Because of what? He telling the truth. He fighting. He said, those ones that will be headed for the truth, whether you know not, John will be headed. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. See, Herod, he feared John. He know he had the power of God. He didn't want to mess with him. But believe me, if there always somebody who's a little slick, and his wife of his, she was very slick. And she even went down the low down tactics to kill John. Let me show you the low down tactic. Go ahead. Because all this because he told, because John told Harry, that's your brother's wife, man. You can't do that. That's unlawful. Go ahead. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief of states of Galilee. Now they celebrate Herod on the birthday. He made a good supper. Now he's going to have some supper going on that supper that his wife going to put in place just to get him to behead John or to kill him. Let's see what she does. Go ahead. And when the daughter 
of the said Herodias came in, danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him. The king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. Now this is what her mother did. She said, go in and dance for him. He knows how, <laughs> she knows how the king here was looking at her daughter. So she knew he had some interest in him looking at her because she told her to go in there and dance for him. And then lust for the girl or the daughter seeped in. And when lust he been, believe me, a man would say anything to get what he want. He would say anything. If you're a man out there and that lust feeling come on to that woman you want, you would say anything. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. Verse 23. And he swore unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto, unto, the, unto the half of my kingdom. Boy, this man was so lustful for that girl. Yes. He said, I'm going to give you up to half. Of my kingdom. Well, that was a big time strip tease she did. <laughs> For him to say half? That's right. Woo! Yeah. Go ahead. And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said. So she went forth and said, I don't know what to do. Her mama know what to do because she knows exactly how her husband was going to respond to her dance. She knew he was going to be lusting after her and he ain't going to be thinking. He going to do whatever. And she said, I don't know what to ask. Listen to what her mother said. And she said, the head of John the Baptist. Wow. All because John told her, you can't marry your mother's wife. Preaching the gospel. This is what we got to understand, men and women of God. Sometimes, boy, that pain causes you your death, your life, excuse me. It causes you your life. John the Baptist lost his head. He was killed. Now, Herod, he didn't really want to do this. But when you make an oath, or when you make a vow, a real man going to hold to it. A real woman going to hold to it. Go ahead. 25. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in the charge of the head of John the Baptist. Charge is a platter. Put John the Baptist's head on the platform. Go ahead. And the king was exceeded sorry. He was sorry. He was like, oh, what have I done? Mm. He was sorry for this. He respected John. That one thing about a, a person in power, and he sees the righteousness you've done, God said, he said, your gift will make room for you amongst kings. He didn't want to mess with John. But you got somebody out there who's an old slicker. His wife was real slick when she did this. And she caused him to murder John. Because of what her little daughter conjured up with this lust for dance. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. And the king was what verse you at? 26. Uh -huh. And the king was exceeding sorry, yet for his own sake, and for their sake, which sat with him. He would not reject her. Because he made a vow. An oath is a vow. He couldn't reject her. He was a man of his word. Go ahead. And immediately the king sent an executioner mm. and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison. He went in and beheaded him in the prison. Go ahead. And brought his head in, in a charger. Gave it to the damsel. And the damsel gave it to her mother. Mm. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse and laid it in a tomb. You see that fight? John, John fight caused him in life. Mm -hmm. But he fought to stand and go. He didn't turn from what he said. He was preaching hard. And that woman wanted to get rid of John because the king respected him. That's right. And she knew. Hey, if he respect him, he might kick me out. He might kick me out. He might do something like, hey, I might lose my queenship if he keep talking to him. You, and she knew she had to get rid of him. Amen. 
Let's go back to Revelation chapter 20. Let me show you something else. We got to fight to stay in the book. I'm going to show you another thing too. How we, another thing that happens to disciples. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. Read it. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Now we saw one that was beheaded. We read about John. We saw that example. So we should draw strength from that. Go ahead. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, are in their hands, and they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Now this image that this person that he said he saw the ones that didn't didn't uh, he said which had not worshipped the beast. The beast is talking about this false prophet, the man of sin, or this king. They're gonna rise up in our day. This is our day right here. And he said neither his mark, neither his image. Neither his mark and right hand on the forehead. He said, look, these are the people right here that's going to go through our time that not going to worship the image. They're going to make an image of the beast. And it's going to be like a robot. And they're going to walk and talk. And you're going to bow down and worship it. Every time you see it. If you don't bow down and worship it, you're going to die. Now these are the people he said going to have a right to thrones. And this ain't nothing new. They've done this before in Daniel's day. Let me show you. Daniel chapter 3. I'm going to show you. they done the exact thing, same thing that Daniel did. That's why God said you cannot throw away the Old Testament. You got to read both books. So you'll see the example. And how these kings in these last days going to act. How this man is sitting on it. Let's look at Daniel chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's look at, listen, let's look at Nebuchadnezzar. And his image that he built in his day. And how the men of God fought him off. Mm -hmm. Verse 1, go ahead. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits. Yes, sir. And the breadth thereof of six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar made an image in his day. Ain't nothing new. You want to know how God handles stuff in the future? Go back to the past. We going back to the past. We're looking at Nebuchadnezzar doing the exact same thing, which is making a statue or an image of himself. And he wanted people to bow down. This going to happen in our day. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. He said, I want all y'all to come here and see what I'm, I'm, I'm planning to do. All the powerful people, look, this is my image. I'm showing it to you, and I want everybody to bow down and worship. Go ahead. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the providence was gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had said. Yes, sir. Then Herod cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. So the people's nations, language, everybody heard what Nebuchadnezzar said about this image. In every language. He wanted everybody to know, look, man, you bow down to this image that look like me. This going to happen in our day. Go ahead. That at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the cypher, psaltery, the image, he wants you to fall down. And, and the Hebrews knew from the law, look man, 
The first commandment said, have no other gods before me. I ain't finna bow down to that. Hmm. They knew that. That's right. This is what Nebuchadnezzar did. Go ahead. And whoso falleth down and worship, worship, but whoso falleth not down, whoso uh, falleth, I'm sorry, and whoso falleth not down and worship shall be shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Ooh, that's a fight right there, buddy. Yes. That's a fight right there. He said, look, man, if you don't fall down, fall down and worship. I'm going to put you in a burning furnace. I'm going to burn you alive. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. Therefore, at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sanctuary, psalter, yes, and sir. all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the tongues fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. See, all the other people fell down and worshipped. All fell down and worshipped. But not, not everybody. Let me show you who did fall down. Go ahead. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldees came near and accused the Jews. Now we're talking about the Jews here, or the Israelites. Go ahead. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall give the sign of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and Dulcimer, yes, sir. and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So these governors, or these men of the king, going back and telling him, reminding him, look, didn't you tell us to fall down and worship the image? <laughs> Once we hear his music, they, they set the Hebrew boys up right here. That's right. Go ahead. Verse 12. Yeah. Verse 12. There are certain Jews who thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods. Now worship the, the golden image which thou hast set up. He said, man, king, I'm going to go tell the tale. I'm going to tell you when you are uh, falling down. He talking about the Hebrew boys who got the law. And this is what's going to happen in our day right here. Pay close attention to this. Because some of us are going to have to fight through this. Of the image of the beast of the ones that didn't get into the land book of life. They don't have to go through this in the tribulation period. That's right. But lose your life, I'm telling you, lose your life. Do not fall down and worship this. And just do exactly what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Go ahead. 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Yes, sir. So they brought these men before the king. They want to make sure the king knows who they are. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? So he giving them, he giving them opportunity to answer, do, he, do they serve his God? And listen to what uh, uh, these Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said. Go ahead. Drop down to 16. Yeah, drop down to verse 16. Go ahead. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego asked and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to ask thee in this matter. Ooh. If that, it, that's some bold talk. Yes, sir. Yes, he sir. said, We ain't got to answer you, king, about this matter. You understand who we serve. Go ahead. If it be so, our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and He will deliver us out of Thy hand, O King. That's faith right there, buddy. They heat this furnace seven times hot. He said, "If it be so, our God will deliver us." He knows what the word said. The word says, "If." Mm -hmm. So that on the other side, if they was ready to die, mm -hmm. they know we cannot. 
stand a chance of not getting in the book of life. Amen. We got to fight this fight with Nebuchadnezzar and show him that the God of Israel is going to protect us. And if not, we still going to get in this book of life. Go ahead. Verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Believe me, we don't serve these gods that they set up now. We serve the God of Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all these gods, the God of Cupid, Valentine's Day, all this. So we serve these God now. But it's going to come a time in our day where they're going to do exactly the same thing in Nebuchadnezzar. They're going to make an image of the man of sin. And say, look, every time you see it, you better be bowing down. Mm. It's going to happen in our day. And I'm going to show you. Go ahead. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fear, and the form of his village was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he you know when he's a real man, full of fear, he's real man. Go ahead. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. This thing will heat it seven times more. Let me show you how much heat was in there. Go ahead. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into burning, fiery furnace. Yes, sir. Then these men were bound in their coats, their, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. So the king put them in all these clothes, and not only are you going to burn up, you know, when you got something on, it catch a fire. It's going it to burn you in there. That's right. His clothes going to catch a fire. He put them all in their clothes. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, because the king's commandments was urgent and the furnace exceeded hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these men died trying to commit murder. Mm -hmm. And they got killed. That's right. They got killed because of the king. Now, I'm telling everybody too, man, when you in the military, you better make sure, in this day right here, you better make sure that you understand that your military boss don't overrule God's law. Because in the last day, these militaries are running. And the people that are in the military, Y'all will be a part of this, of killing people. Exactly. Law enforcement going to be a part of it. If you ain't going to be a part of this, they're going to kill you and get you out of the way. So make, make that fool for thought if you're in the military. Go ahead. Verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning furnace. Yes, sir. Then... Uh, Nebuchadnezzar the king was a stone and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men down into the midst of the fire? Yes, sir. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He's like, King, did we cast three people down? He's looking through a telescope or something. He's like, Hold up. Let's see what he sees. Go ahead. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. So he see four men loose in there. Loose, four men, go ahead. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Ooh, so he, Jesus showed up in that thing. It could have been Jesus. He said the form of a man That's or right. an angel. We don't know. That's right. He, we just going off his testimony. Hallelujah. Jesus showed up Hallelujah. in the time they did not waver from their faith. Sure they up. fought through that. This is what we got to do, y'all. This is how we fight to stay in the book. Just like that, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's look at what the king said once they came out of this furnace. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar came into the mouth of the burning fire and furnace. Yes, sir. And spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, <laughs> come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Wait a minute. He got, he said, you service of the most high God. That's right. 
He was a believer at this point. Yes. And a lot of times we have to go through some as Christians to show the other nation of people and the king like, hey, my God is powerful than your God. You got three, you got my men who cast us in the fire, and they died before they even got in the fire. Mm. We got in the fire, we walk around there, we look, we talk, and they can't know we walked out. Sure. Nothing happened to us. Not even our hair or anything was seen. Go ahead, brother. Verse 27. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's council, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Mm. Nor was a hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed. Nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Ooh, you understand what he's saying? God protected them. They, their hair wasn't even sin. It mean like he wasn't even burnt up. Their, their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Oh, boy. <laughs> Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him. So you know what he said. He sent an angel to deliver them. Go ahead. And have changed the king's word and yield their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. That's powerful right now. These men changed the king's thought because of how they stood in the time of trouble. They didn't waver. Man, do what you got to do. Bind us up. Sit us in there. God's going to protect us. Yes. And this is what we got to understand. We got to draw strength from it. These days going to happen again, y'all. I'm going to show you that. Go ahead. 29. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, mm. and their houses shall be made a dumb heel, because there is no other God that can deliver after this soul. So from that point on, that could easily put them boys on top. They're not saying that he was a believer. Nebuchadnezzar was all about power. If you got the power, and he see you got the power, he was a businessman. He's like, hey, man, we're going to roll with what Neb for this Shadrach and Meshach doing now. We ain't seen nothing like that before. Absolutely. We need this power on our side. Mm. And that's how these presidents, these governors, these dictators, if you got a gift from God, they will use it. So we got to make sure that some of us are going to be called up and they're going to ask some questions. How do y'all get through this? What do y'all do? Go ahead. Verse 30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So they got a promotion through all that. Like I said, the weapon might form up against you, but it didn't prosper. They got promoted after this. But let's see this. This uh, mark of the beast in our day. Revelation chapter 13. Believe me, if we're not aware of the, this from the old, and when they come upon a lot of people, they're going to bow down, they're going to worship. You know why most people going to bow down and worship? Because they want to be comfortable. They tired of pain. They don't want to be uncomfortable. They don't want to be uncomfortable. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 11. Let's look at this man of sin coming on the scene. What he's going to do? He's going to do the exact same thing that Nebuchadnezzar did. Go ahead. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. Yes, sir. Spake as a dragon. Now, this is here. Two horns like a lamb. And he spake like a dragon. The horn represents power. And he spoke like a lamb. Meaning that he looked religious. He looked godly. He spoke God, but he wasn't God. He said he had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. Excuse me. He, he spake as a dragon. He looked like a Christian. But from his words, he spoke like the dragon, which is Satan. That's right. He changed the Sabbath day from the seventh day of week to the first day of the week. He, now these Catholic priests are changing the Lord's Prayer. They change a lot. Just go and look. Go ahead. Verse 12. 
And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Wait a minute, who, who, who's the first beast before him? Nebuchadnezzar. He going back following what the first beast, so the first king. Who the first king? Go to Daniel chapter 7. He tells you the first king of the world. Nebuchadnezzar ran the whole world. And he's like, he, he said he exercised great wonders. He made fire come down from heaven. Go ahead. Whose deadly wound was healed. Mm -hmm. And he doeth great wonders so that he make it fire come down from heaven on the earth and the sight of men. Yes, sir. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. See what I'm saying? He said, make an image of the beast. This exact same thing as Nebuchadnezzar did. Make an image of the beast that was wounded by the sword and did live. I'm saying this. This is talking about, I have to take that back about Nebuchadnezzar, but I just remember the history. In 476 AD, the Rome was wounded and their power was stripped from them. And now, their wounds are healed now. They are stronger. <clears throat> they are stronger. They build up strength around the world. They set up all kind of Catholic churches. And for the ones that say they ain't Catholic, if you bring up a Christmas tree in your eye, you Catholic. If you're serving on the Sunday, you Catholic. If you serving by Easter Sunday and Good Friday, you Catholic. Because the Catholics or the Romans gave you that. And they wounds are healed because they got the whole world worshiping the beast. Mm -hmm. And now they're waiting on the image and bleeding. This is our day right here when this beast gonna come. This is what he said right here. 15. 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Yes, sir. That the image of the beast should both speak Cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. See, Nebuchadnezzar didn't have his power, he just had a statue. But this right here is talking about a robot, and he's going to give power to the beast. A lot of people be talking about this 5G and how powerful it is. And believe me, they set up this world so it can be controlled by robots. I did a lesson on that about the mark of the beast and how these robots are being made soldiers, how these robots are being made pastors in churches. All this stuff is online right now. And believe me, they need one big computer to bring life to all of them. And that's what we're talking about. They're going to build this image. If you see that image in your area and you don't buy that restaurant, this is what's going to happen. Go ahead. And he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or, or in their forehead. Oh, okay, right. He said, he said, first of uh, he said, causing that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. If you are not going to worship that image of that robot, once it come, around, come down and you bow down and worship it, you're going to be killed. And he said, he caused all he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand of the forehead. So he's looking for that mark. He's looking for that mark. Some people say the computer chip, hey, I don't know. Whatever it is, you don't let nobody put nothing under your skin. And the reason why they want this mark under your skin, this is the reason why. Go ahead. 17. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Not only do he want you to bow down and worship, but you also need the mark in your right hand or forehead to buy something. Folks, this ain't really important. Yes, it is. Right now, if you pay your house off, gotta pay for it. And folks, they can't take my house. Well, yes, they can. Because guess what? You still got to pay taxes. Folks say, well, they can't take my car. Oh, yes, it is. You might have paid the car, but you still got to pay for a tag. Oh, man, I can go ahead and buy me some land, and then I can, I can put me a farm on that land, 
wait a minute. You can buy the land, but you still got to pay taxes on the land. That's right. So this man got you in case 22 here. If you're thinking about surviving in this Babylonian system or when the man is seeing himself on the scene, you're going to have a hard time surviving. I'm not saying that people are not going to come through this great tribulation period that don't get in the wilderness. But your best bet to make sure you get into the wilderness at this time. This is how we fight the good fight of faith by making sure we understand our transportation and get in the place of safety. But these people right here, they got caught. They got caught. And now you got to deal with worshiping the beast and taking his mall so you can buy and sell and get food. Just want to make sure you understand, we got to fight the good fight of faith to get in the book of life. And believe me, if you don't understand about this image in the last day, you're going to buy it out of worship. Because most of us, Israel, we serve God by our bellies. And you can't buy a sin, you can't eat. Man, Israel going to do what it takes to eat. I don't know what he called them. Let's go to John chapter 15. This is the last one. I'm going to show you that Jesus said, told us the same stuff he went through. We're going to go through this, the exact same thing. And believe me, we got a job to do. This is our job as pastors of the, of the God of Israel church to teach the people how to fight, to get in the book. But if you never teach your congregation that all of this stuff is going to come about, and when it hit them, their mind gonna go crazy. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna say, Well, God, you got to say, I gotta eat. Give me that ball, man. Give me that ball to my right hand and my forehead. Give it to me. He understand, no, he won't. He said, if you take that ball in your right hand and your forehead, you are in that lake of fire. Doom. Doom. Good. Doom. But let's look at something here. John chapter 15, verse 15. We got to understand our job. And Jesus chose us to do a job. You didn't choose Jesus. I didn't choose Jesus. Come on. He chose me. Ooh, I thought I chose him. <laughs> I didn't thought I chose him. Reach it, brother. John chapter yeah. 15, verse 15. Go ahead, brother. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord do. Yes, sir. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. And how has he made this known to us? He written it in a book. Mm. And he given the testimonies. He tell us to read. This is for our edification. This is for our learning right now. But listen what about the, how he chooses people to do the job of God. Go ahead. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Wait a minute. I thought I chose God. I thought I you. I thought you chose me, man. Yes, we really don't understand the plan of God when we really don't understand how He chooses you. That's right. That's right. If you sit up there thinking that you chose God, you don't understand Him. Amen. Amen. He chose you, and believe me, if He chose you, you gonna do the job. That's right. <laughs> you gonna do it at John when you try not to do the job of going to the net, going to the middle and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. He said, "A fish." And scooped him up. Yes, he did. And that was a fight. Three days and three nights of that fish. Man, I can't even imagine that. Mm. But listen to the choice. 16 again. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Yes, sir. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. What is this fruit? He want to make sure you pray for a fruit. He ordained you to pray for a fruit, meaning that pray people to Christ. Have the fruit of the Spirit, of love, kindness, and all these things of the Spirit. He wants you to bring fruit because he's going to judge us off our fruit. And how many people bring their people to Christ right now? How many people you brought to the Sabbath plan? How many people that you told about the Sabbath? How many people have you posted how many people, how many videos have you posted about the God of Israel? It ain't got to be mine. 
It can be Bowie, Liza, Marlon, all the ones that we listen to. How many people post about the scriptures on their Facebook page? You could be reaching millions, thousands, or hundreds. And that's going to be your fruit. And the reason why, and you're going to be judged off that. God said, I gave you this media avenue here. Why do you use it for, me, for, my, uh, for my glory? But I see on your Facebook page, you got a lot of cussing. You got a lot of sexual perverted stuff on there. You looking at a lot of movies. But I don't see where you spread it, the fruit of my gospel. Where's your fruit? How's you helping? Me and this brother, we, I put this thing out on Facebook and YouTube. We, this is our fruit. For yours. Go ahead, brother. Verse 17. These things I command you that you love one another. Yes, sir. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So if the world don't hate you, that means that you ain't telling the gospel. If you tell them, hey man, you're going to hell if you eat that catfish sandwich, they're going to hate you, brother. Or you're going to hell if you're going to church on the Sunday, they're going to hate you. Because they're going to say, how are you going to judge me? I said, brother, I'm not judging you. I can read it to you out of the book. I can write these judgments. Sister, I can judge you. I, I ain't judging you. The book is judging you. He said, they're going to hate you. What else? If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Yes, sir. Verse 19. If ye were of, if ye were of the world, the world will love his own. Mm -hmm. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Understand this. When we put these videos out, the biggest of our congregation of Israel, they might get some thousands on their videos of teaching about the God of Israel. But these Sunday big time mega preachers like Jake's Dollar, they get millions of hits. Thousand upon Joe Olson, thousand me, cause the world loved him. But when they see us, oh man, they just talk about the gospel. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. He want to put people in bondage with that law. No, you got to have the law so you can open up God's ears. But you hate to hear it because it's correcting you and it corrected me. Don't be that one. And this is what Jesus said. They're going to hate you. The world going to hate you. So get used to it. Go ahead. Verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. Yes, sir. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So Jesus is telling you the things I went through. Yo, you ain't greater than me. You don't go through the same thing. I was beaten. I was crying with the thorns. I was persecuted. I was called a devil. I was looked upon. They tried to kill me. All these things that we seen that Paul went through, John went through, Shadrach and Meshach went through, some of this stuff Jesus went through himself. Jesus said, you ain't no greater than me. I went through it, you're going to go through it. Your fight has got to be real. And what I mean by real, God got to see that your fight was real enough to get into the book of life. And you got to see my fight was real enough to get in the book. Did I try hard enough? Or was I just playing with it? Or was I just going along with the crowd? God, that's why God said, he said, let me grow up with the task. I separated him at the heart. He knows that even in the Sabbath classes all over the world, they, he knows that. People are not just there to serve the God of Israel. They're there because their husbands, their dads, their mothers, their fathers told them to come. And they're just going along with the flow. And don't let that be you. Not hearing well done, that good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear that. Go ahead, brother. 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. They're going to do all these things that we read about the prophets. Apostle Paul, John, 
Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. It's a lot more that we could tell. We could be here about seven, eight hours talking about this. Amen. But we have to make sure we give you a little bit of this so you can go back and research it yourself. You're going to go through this, I'm going to go through this. We just got to get prepared mentally. Amen. And how do we prepare mentally? We get in here on the Sabbath day and we read and study. Read and study. And that is our fight. That's how we fight to get in the Lamb Book of Life. And believe me, you want to be there. Uh, excuse me, I ain't going to say believe me. You want, believe me, I want to be there. I know this brother want to be there. Amen. So we fight and put out videos. We fight and put this word out. Amen. So I hope everybody understands about fight to get in the Lamb Book of Life. And also, don't forget, we got um, we got Pentecost coming up. It's going to be May 31st. Right. Make sure you remember that. Fight to remember that. Put it on your calendar. So I hope everybody got some understanding. We're going to stand and we're going to close out with the prayer, Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6. It's so good to know that we're doing what we're supposed to do. Amen. And happy Sabbath, everybody. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which are in heaven. Our Father which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us for our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir.